G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Recently, Gaijin have released a set of planned battle rating changes for January 2021, which in my guess is to be released around uh, early February. Now, a lot of these changes are fairly interesting, uh, particularly the changes for air realistic, and these are the ones that we're going to cover here. We're not going to touch ground, we're not going to touch fleet, and we're not going to touch arcade and sim. These are the two game modes, uh, the, the air realistic is the game mode that I'm most familiar with, uh, and therefore air realistic is the game mode that we're going to be having a look at today. So, these changes overall sort of concern me a lot. Now, I really enjoy War Thunder. I put a lot of time into this game, and I really enjoy both the concept, uh, part of the execution, the variety of vehicles, you name it. War Thunder for me is a really good game for me to sink a lot of time into, and if it wasn't for me enjoying this game so much, I would not be making this content. Uh, especially this type of content that is a little bit more critical. Uh, it's not to rant, it is not just to gain viewers or, you know, feed off people's negativity. Uh, it's not to sort of please a crowd, if you will. Uh, to me, these are the changes that I see as uh, a little bit more beneficial. Uh, if you disagree with me, then that's fine. I'd like to hear your voice in the comments below, because a uh, second opinion is always important, and uh, you guys giving a sort of different perspective is also very beneficial. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of the more interesting changes. So, the first one that stands out to me are so, kind of surprising. These are weird little low tier planes that I don't really see getting played a lot. Either going up by one or going down by one. Things like the Kai 21 1 High uh, and the SB 2M 103 MV3. If uh, I had to tell you what that was between two different Kai 21s or two different S2, SB 2Ms, I wouldn't be able to tell you the difference. Uh, someone probably would because they fly them religiously, like, uh, I don't know, look blue, go purple in the sim, but either way, that uh, these particular distinctions of very tiny little variants mean literally nothing to me, and I don't understand why they're even getting touched. Uh, to me, no one really plays them, to me, no one really gives a shit about them, uh, and I don't really see why they're even being changed. We'll get to that in a moment, though. So, our next changes here are J21s. Now, these are all the J21As being the 21A1, 21A2, and the A21A3, all going up in battle rating by one little mark. This is uh, from 3 to 3 to 3 7, and from 3 7 to 4 0, respectively. Now, for me, I don't understand this change. I made a video on the J21s, uh, and sort of discussing if it was really that overpowered, uh, and it turns out, no, it's not. Uh, if you learn to play the plane, and if you learn to fight it, uh, by doing a simple tactic that is called not committing to head-ons, you'll be fine most of the time, because the plane has superior head-on armament, but it also has decent dogfighting capabilities, so if you employ things like a boom and zoom maneuver, you will most of the time be fine, uh, particularly concerning its mediocre climb rate, particularly in the A21 variant for some odd reason. It just seems a little bit heavier. Now, for these particular planes, like I said, I don't really see the benefit in putting them up to uh, battle rating 4.0. Uh, they already see things like the, uh, the uh, F4U1C, which is a little bit kind of crazy, the P38L as well, uh, and not to mention the BF109 G6 and uh, a couple of Focke Wulf 190As. I think it's the A5, the, uh, the, the main A5, the 4.7 one. For me, I don't understand why these planes are seeing things like a J21. The J21 just, in my opinion, does not cut it in this particular respect. Uh, and then it goes to 4.0 and it'll see 5.0, so things like the F82, uh, you know, I think it's a pretty done deal. The J21 doesn't really have a chance in a full up tier, whereas at least at uh, 3.7, it uh, kinda did. Now, the J21A1, I understand, uh, going up to 3.7, because the other ones are basically the same to me. Uh, Performance-wise, in a sort of general, roundabout way, they are basically the same, and I don't, I don't really see a particularly major difference that warrants that uh, lower battle rating. I understand that there is a little bit of uh, less uh, cannon rounds, but honestly, I don't really think that matters too much. The next one we have is actually a fairly positive change, and this is the 288C the uh, premium bomber in the German tech tree going up in battle rating from 5.7 to 6.0. This plane basically terrorizes these uh, mid to high tier props and is ridiculously strong when it's uh, fully down tiered uh, and is absolutely butt fuck useless when it's up tiered. I think this plane should be really uh, limited in terms of its, uh, in terms of its potency uh, and I think up tiering it is the right solution here. 
getting it down tier, we have the F2G Super Corsair going from 6.7 to 6.3. Now, I did do a video on the uh, Super Corsair, and I did find it okay uh, at 6.7, but 6.3 isn't really going to hurt it, considering the uh, P51H is 6.3. In my opinion, the P51H could kind of go to 6.7, but uh, we'll see how the F2G goes at uh, 6.3. I think it's okay, I don't really think it's a big deal. I think 5.3 will handle it just fine, particularly K4s. K4s can almost outclimb this thing, I'm pretty sure. Um, but that's pretty much all for props. I don't really have many other problems apart from the J21s. Now, in jets, we're sort of seeing something a little bit more interesting. The Canberras are going up in battle rating for some odd fucking reason. The 8.3, I don't really understand that. Uh, I can see why the B Mark 6 might go up, but it's really not going to have a whole lot of a difference. Sure, you won't be able to fight P80s or F80As, uh, but honestly, the difference it makes is marginal. I don't see a need for it to go to 8.3, uh, and the prominence of air-to-air -air missiles means that the Canberra is practically not food, but it's certainly a lot more difficult to get air kills as a uh, Canberra Mark 6 in a full up tier. As for the B-57s, uh, I see the exact same reasoning, it, they're basically the same plane. Uh, the Yak-23, I don't know, I don't fly it enough, but the F-84Fs, which are going down from uh, 8.7 to 8.3, I think that is, uh, like, ridiculously late. I think these things should be basically 8.0. I don't see the F-84Fs as anything competitive at 8.7 as it is. 8.3 is not going to do a whole lot, but we're going to see how that sort of pans out. I don't really mind, we'll see how it goes. Now, the other change that is a little bit confusing is the uh, F3H2, the uh, the Demon, is going up to 9.7. Now, I don't understand why. I get that it's got four M9Bs, uh, but things like the Cougar are like a whole battle rating below and have four M9Bs and close to the same armament. Uh, the F3H isn't particularly fast. It's not particularly good at climbing. It has a radar, um, and it is, it is it is a really fat plane. So it's not exactly your energy fighting plane. Um, I don't actually know how to use it properly, but for me, I, I don't really see this as necessary, uh, especially when 10.7 is your max. The F3H is now gonna be facing MiG-21 bisses, and I don't really see why. Uh, we'll get to that sort of stuff in a moment, but before this, we are starting to get to the bit where I think Gaijin is uh, smoking crack, honestly. These changes are nothing short of fucking stupid. J6A, MiG-19S, MiG-19PT, Q5A, J72, all down to 9.7. Yes, that's right, MiG-19S at 9.7. Do you suffer in your A5 Sabre as it is? Well, enjoy getting absolutely butt-fucked by the MiG-19S. What kind of crack-smoking idiot puts this plane at 9.7? The J6A and the MiG-19PT, which are basically the same plane, are too strong to see things like the A5 Sabre. Now we get to see ja uh, javelins in the uh, MiG-19 PT. Isn't it amazing? Not only that, but if you're in a 163 in a full up tier, that is the 8.7 one, you'll now see all of these planes. Uh, good luck outrunning them. Uh, you'll outturn them, but they'll basically run you down and energy trap you within a matter of minutes. There is basically nothing that you can do as an 8.7 against these planes at all. Most 8.7s don't have missiles. In fact, it is a rarity. The only ones that do are a couple of premium G91s, the Javelin, which those missiles are pretty shit anyway. Um, maybe the Swift, if you want to count those absolutely abysmal, uh, I think it's Fire Flash missiles. Um, but there are no real good missiles at 8.7, and it should stay that way. There should not be strong missiles at 8.7. In fact, there should be very limited options in that respect, um, which is kind of why I would. I'm, I'm hesitant to say maybe G91 R4 at 8.7, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So, MiG, with the MiG-19S at 9.7, what do we actually have to fight alongside it? Well, you have things like the F-100D, which are now completely useless because the MiG-19 beats the F-100D now in every single way. Before, in patch 1.85, when the MiG-19 and the F-100 were adversaries, the MiG-19 was in a sort of... Uh, reduced performance state if you will it wasn't quite as potent and the balancing was sublime it was perfect I don't think Gaijin could have gotten the balance any more perfect because the MiG-19 PT was not idiot proof nor was the F-100 
and the F2 Sabre and the MiG-17 were both really strong because they had that sort of uh, close level of performance plus they were also a full battle rating apart. Now in this case it's basically gone back to where it was except the MiG-19 has literally everything over the F-100D except missiles. And the MiG-19S has even more so in terms of energy, acceleration and uh, dogfighting potential. The MiG-19S at almost all altitudes is just flat out better. Uh, and then you've also got the uh, English Electric Lightning which can potentially, you know, say hi to the MiG-19s and give them a bit of a slap around. But I don't think it's enough. Uh, not only that, but I think these particular planes are just too low. I would put the MiG-19s on par with the F-104s. So I'm not saying that the F-104s should also be 9.7. I think they should all be 10.0 and there should be another change that we have on the, uh, in, in the works as such. The next change is the MiG-21 PFM to 9.7. I can totally understand this. I don't like the PFM at all. Uh, will it stop its suffering? Not really. It'll limit it to some extent by increasing the amount of down tiers it gets. Um, but that's kind of okay. I'm not particularly fussed about the PFM going uh, to 9.7. And I think that's overall a decent change. The final change actually has me really pissed off. This is the F4 Phantom, the F4C, from 10.7 down to 10.3. And you might think that this would actually be a really good change because then the 10.3 battle rating will give the Phantom a little bit more room to breathe. But on the contrary, the F4C will still see the 10.7 battle ratings. It's still in that sort of battle rating hole but a few of them will get sucked down into 9.3. Think about what's at 9.3. F-86K, uh, I think three nations have that at this point, France, Italy, and uh, Germany. There are some 10.0s uh, that are a little bit basic in terms of their avionics. Uh, certain 9.7s, like the uh, new to 9.7 F-3H, I think that is an absolute joke. Can you imagine getting aim 7 in your CL-13 Mark 5. What about like all the other issues that the F4C brings down in its battle rating? It, it is just absolutely ludicrous that one plane has the potential to ruin an entire battle rating. And then on top of that you have the further drilling into the ground with the down tiering of the MiG-19s and the Q5s. Now I think the Q5A is a pile of dog shit and should stay at 9.7 because the Q5A uh, uh, early or whatever it is is fairly decent at 9.7 and there are basically no differences. What we should have gotten instead of the Q5A was the Q5D which has like some pretty powerful missiles. I can't remember which ones. But uh, the J7 II I think is a fine addition by the way I should have mentioned that. But the MiG-19s are the real issue here. They are a lot stronger than they used to be and now they are at a lower battle rating where they will literally tear apart anything that they face. These planes are formidable war machines that have ridiculous amounts of weapons and Gaijin is just giving them free reign to absolutely go down to low tier, stomp and then maybe get crushed every now and then. But it looks okay on the st statistics and that makes it fine, apparently. The thing I don't get about Gaijin is they look at their statistics and they see a plane's probably its kill death ratio and probably it's win rate, and that's about it. And by kill death ratio, it's probably also padded by AI, ground kills, things like that. And for bombers and attackers, that's kind of okay. Uh, but for fighters, you know, you would be a little bit concerned about that. Anyway, the sheer potential that these planes have is not realized by Gaijin's balancing. I don't know what it is. Is it a balancing team? Is it a balancing algorithm? Is it just one Gaijin employee clicking an algorithm, telling it to balance the game based on its statistics, retrieving them from the server in a very limited state, and then just chucking them onto a spreadsheet to put onto the forums for everyone to drool over? No. Well, I think it is actually. I think these particular changes are so primitive, and they're just not handled by any human. It's quite obvious when you see the way that the uh, results pan out of these particular circumstances. You look at something like the G91YS going constantly back and forth between 9.3, 9.7, 10.0, and then back and forth a couple of times. You can see it with a couple of other planes, and like I mentioned earlier, you can see it with the weird 
SB2M variants or the Kai 21 variants that no one knows about, no one plays. And in fact, no one gives a fuck about. But here they are getting down tiered or up tiered or whatever, and no one seems to really give a rat's ass. So, what's going on here? It's pretty clear to me, considering that all of their economy changes are done by an algorithm. Who changes a repair cost by three silver lions? An algorithm does. Who would therefore, in, you would expect, to change weird battle ratings of planes that no one cares about? It would have to be an algorithm. Who increases a battle rating only to decrease it three months later when the situation hasn't changed for the plane? And then only to increase it once again? Of course that would be an algorithm. Algorithms are not sufficient to balance War Thunder. There are 1600 odd vehicles in this game at this point, maybe more and Gaijin is using an algorithm to balance these, I understand that there are so many vehicles that you can't just look at and go, okay, this one is a clear 9-7, and this one is a clear 8-3. But there are certain areas of battle ratings where there are similar performing vehicles that need to be balanced and matched against each other. And what Gaijin has done here is they've tried to do that with the MiG-19s, they've noticed that its performance is lacking and it should just go down. But what are the things that they're not looking at? To me, it seems like they're not looking at things like how often the vehicle gets up tiered, how often the vehicle gets down tiered, and its performance when it gets up tiered versus when it gets down tiered. Because I can guarantee you that the MiG-19s would do fairly well when they're, up, when they're down tiered, but when they're up tiered, would get absolutely creamed. And I can tell you that from personal experience, that is exactly what happens. So when these MiG-19s go down to 9.7, they are going to absolutely cream everything. And what, would you know it, they're probably going to go and get a battle rating increase. I did hypothesize this about the lightning, but it turns out that its uh, potency is just not strong enough in terms of its um, ability to kill things that are a little bit slower than it, as well, of course, as its overall killing power. Apparently, for the War Thunder community, its guns are just too hard to aim, as well as its missiles being uh, kind of shit stock, let's be honest. So, what should be done? What should Gaijin do as an active measure to improve the situation in my opinion. Well, of course, first of all, they should not be putting the Phantom down to 10.3. Leaving it at 10.7 means that yes, while it will suffer, it will not have that opportunity to absolutely ruin a battle rating below it. And likewise for the MiG-19s. They have that opportunity now to literally trash 8.7 further into the ground than it has already been. At the moment, 8.7 is a bit of a shithole because of the 9.7 stomping that is occurring from uh, things like back in the day, or a couple of patches ago, the Harrier and uh, the A7D at the moment, which, um, by the way, is not even going up in battle rating. This thing has AIM-9Js and flares and RWR and is almost as fast as everything else it faces on the deck, plus has ridiculous gun casts, plus has ridiculous armament for air, -air combat. Insane head-on potential, great missiles, air spawn, yet the Q5 starts on the ground but it's an attacker. Things getting left in the dust like this are unacceptable on Gaijin's part. Gaijin should know better because they've been at this for way too long to uh, honestly make these types of rookie mistakes. It's kind of disappointing to see it because I really love this game so much and seeing this wasted potential really disappoints me. It, it's genuinely upsetting because 8.7 and 9.7 could be something really great once more. Because it used to be, until a couple of changes happened, mo mostly battle rating changes. Uh, and of course the Harriers finally put the nail in the coffin there, particularly the GR1. But um, honestly the, the 9.3 Harriers aren't the end of the world. Uh, I would say though that uh, having a lot of up tiers are not helpful. And whilst that is the case, uh, there are no 9.3 jets to sort of uh, flesh out that. And what you're doing here is effectively you're going to take more of them away. The CL-13 Mark VI should be a 9.3. The F3H should be a 9.3 as well. These are vehicles that don't belong at 9.7. They're just not strong enough. And not only that, we don't have any battle rating, de uh, ba battle rating decompression on top of that. And so you're still fighting MiG-21 Bisses in your uh, 9.7s. These things have basically everything that you could want. And yet here we are, we don't have anything that we can sort of separate appropriately. I would suggest that Gaijin puts the battle ratings up to 11.0, but 11.3 would be ideal. 
with the MiG-21 best being at 11.0 or 11.3, and the BRs sort of flowing down from there. There was a fairly decent post, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he did outline some battle rating changes on the top of the battle rating suggestions thread, which is on the War Thunder forums. I would highly suggest every War Thunder community, or every member of every War Thunder community, takes a look at these battle rating changes and makes a post on the forums with an appropriate criticism. I would also like to say, do not lose your shit at the developers, because let's face it, if someone told you that you were a fucking retard in your face, how would you feel? I personally wouldn't take that very kindly, and I don't take that very kindly when it's put to me in my face. And so I would highly advise War Thunder community members when making forum posts to not act like cockheads because you will get a cockhead response. And I have done that before as a, as a YouTuber, and I will continue to do that because that is the human response. And Gaijin will continue to do that just the same way that I do. Because that is the way that uh, human responses work. If you start open, calm, reasonable, then they have a greater chance of actually listening to you with open ears, instead of closing off, curling up into a ball, and going back to their development. Ladies and gents, I implore you to be reasonable. Much like I'm attempting to be reasonable here, despite my frustration. But I thank you all for being very patient and watching. Ladies and gentlemen, go make a forum post. Go respond to this particular uh, thread. Give them your feedback. It is extremely important. And chances are, as this video goes live, uh, you may actually see the changes, or they may postpone the changes just in time. You never know what one voice could do, so I would encourage you all to speak up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.